Slay the Spire is an absolute masterpiece. And I'm gonna try to recreate it in one week. A roguelike deck builder where you slay monsters, acquire cool cards, slay bigger monsters, get decked out with all the loot and buffs you can carry like the Giga Chad that you are, and then you start over. I love this game so much I actually had to uninstall it from my PC because I couldn't stop playing it while I was on boring calls at work. Now, I've never made a 2D game and my art skills consist of buying pre-made assets from Cinti, so this might be a total disaster. If this does work out, I'll throw all the code up on GitHub for you guys, so welcome to Scuffed in 7. For day one, I began by sketching out a document with all the features that I would need to implement in the upcoming week. From classes to cards, relics, buffs, enemies, scenes, there are a lot of components and not enough time, so I immediately got started with building the underlying architecture. This was boxed out all in different scenes that we would need and some starter classes that we would use for our basic components. Actually wait, I just realized maybe I shouldn't be showing this as I'm trying to hack it together as quickly as I can. Half of you are going to be convinced I'm brain dead and the other half are going to be wrong. I then got started on the cards for which we are going to use scriptable objects for storing all the data. I then wrapped up the day with some gray boxing of the main scenes. Day two began with sketching out some UI and I've got to say this is some of the UI I have ever seen. Then I started prototyping how the battle scenes will be laid out. For the cards used in battle, I set up three separate lists that they will flow between. The draw pile, to the hand, to the discard pile, then back to the draw. I then specified targets for all the cards. For example, playing a defend will target your player, increasing their block. Whereas attacks like strikes require you to drag the mouse cursor over to the enemy to damage them. I also added a very basic animation for showing the cards flowing to the discard pile after playing them. I was already feeling the pressure of the time crunch, but I really wanted to give it my best shot. In order to save time, I tried to avoid rewriting any code that can be reused. For example, here I pull a little Saudi Arabia and hijack this script to fly it into its twin script over here. I spent some time that night creating the player's icon. It's currently 1.30 in the morning. I wake up in five hours for work leaving me with four hours of sleep and zero regrets. Day three, I started off by creating health bars for all the characters. I'm using a slider with the player's max health as the width and subtracting from that when he's damaged. I also created some proper UI and stats for the block effect. I wrote the logic for it to prevent damage equal to the current amount of block. It does, however, get removed at the start of your next turn, just like in the game. Slay the Spire contains a whole host of unique buffs and debuffs that are applied to both the player and the enemy. These will do things such as increase the amount of damage you do or receive. Here you can see an example of me applying a vulnerable debuff to the enemy, allowing my attacks to deal an increased amount of damage. I created the icons for these buffs that closely resemble the ones in game, and it's impressive how quickly my art skills can improve if I just blatantly plagiarize other people's work. Day 4 I focused on enemies. Now, enemies have a predetermined pattern of attacks. For example, let's look at the Fungi Beast. It has two moves, Bite, dealing six damage, and Grow, causing it to gain three strength. It has a 60% chance of using Bite and a 40% chance of using Grow. To simulate this, I set up two possible moves for the enemy. Then, after randomly generating a shuffled list of turns, I created a basic icon for Remy here, and we are good to go. A unique thing that Slay the Spire does is display the enemy's intent. This way you can strategize and plan out your turns. Do you need to defend or can you go balls to the walls outputting as much damage as possible? I created these intent icons in Photoshop and by the way I'm creating all of these with a mouse because I don't own a drawing tablet. But if any company does want to sponsor me with a tablet, um, I will literally let you After that, I worked on implementing other enemies. A louse, which has a unique defend ability, allowing it to curl up with a shield after the first hit. And a cultist, that has a custom ritual buff that increases the strength each turn. This is the point where I really started to second guess if I'd be able to finish it in time. I had planned on implementing a bunch of enemies, but the unique logic for each one made it very difficult. This actually helped me develop a greater 
appreciation for this game as the turn cycle seems so simple on the surface. But with how unique each enemy's turns are, I don't know, I guess it just is part of what makes this game special. Day 5 started with the creation of a proper background for our scene, which was drawn, uh, blatantly traced, in Photoshop with a filter or two slapped on it. After that, I implemented the energy system, limiting you to a certain quota of energy that can be spent each turn. I also implemented a victory condition for our player on the enemy's death, and this resets all your buffs and debuffs, but it saves the player's health so that that value carries over to the next fight. Now I wanted to create an elite for our players to fight, and Slay the Spire has many, but I decided to go with the Goblin Knob. Now, why did I choose this one? Well, like every important decision I've ever made in my life, I, I, I just picked the one that I thought looked cool. After sketching it out and correcting the proportions to make him look slightly more realistic, I completed my magnum opus, Hassan. I added a special elite engagement for him and programmed his core mechanic, Enrage, a buff that causes him to increase in strength when the player plays a skill card, such as uh, Defend. This creates a very interesting fight for you in that you have to approach it in a very unique manner due to the threat of Enrage. You'll avoid blocking too much early on as the damage he inflicts scales with each one of those skills you play. And you can find yourself in a world of hurt once his strength really starts ramping up. Although today contained a lot of progress, I have a long list of items that are still not done and we are nearing the final few days. Luckily day 6 and 7 fall on the weekend so I'll have a little extra time to grind it out. Day 6 began with the creation of a player UI that displays the class, current health, gold, and floor number. The floor number had to be extra difficult for no reason and include a little suffix on the end of the number, but one switch statement later and we are good to go. After that I got started on the relics, permanent items that provide you with a passive bonus for the rest of the run. As the Iron Chad, you start with one called Burning Blood, which other than greatly increasing your chances of stroke, heals you for 6 hit points of damage after each fight. You can also obtain additional relics by defeating the elites. For instance, we slay the Goblin Knob and obtain the Anchor Relic. This will give us 10 block at the start of every fight for the rest of the game. I intentionally chose simple ones and was able to get them implemented fairly easily for a change, so including the time spent on the icons, adding all of them took about an hour. I then started development on the map. Slay the Spire has a procedurally generated map with different types of encounters, from normal enemies and elites to chest sites and rest sites. Although procedural generation was a little out of the question with the time ticking down, I created a basic map that has all the encounter types. I haven't gotten the pathing finished yet, but I will allow the player to navigate by going up one floor at a time. After adding both the rest sites, which heal you for 30% of your health, and the chest site, which drops a random relic, I called it for the day. Day 7, thank the lord this is almost over. I spent most of the day working on refining the UI and making some juice to give our game a little bit more life. I added a damage indicator that displays the amount of damage that hits cause. I also added a brief transition effect that fades in and out the intent icon above the enemy's head. I absolutely love the difference it makes and I also added a basic animation to convey the enemy's attack. I wanted to animate the sprites but as I mentioned earlier I have no knowledge of how to do this. So I found this superb YouTube video by Tarodev, uh, linked in the description. It goes over a whole workflow from Photoshop to Unity. I actually want to take a step back for a second and talk about how much I love tutorials that are just quick, simple, to the point, and no fluff. It's good to check them out. After cutting up all the previously created icons, I was able to animate them in about an hour each, and it's everything I've ever wanted. The battle scene is so much more lively with them added. At this point, I returned my focus to the cards, as they're kind of the centerpiece of this deck building game, and I've spent very little time on them. As you can see, my art has improved drastically as this week has progressed. Once I had the icons and logic created for about a dozen cards, I added card rewards after fights, where you're able to pick between one of three offered cards. This card is added to your deck and can be used in later battles. And here, is the finished product. With selecting an engagement on the map, using your deck to slay monsters, acquiring cards, slaying bigger monsters, getting decked out with all the loot and buffs you can carry like the Giga Chad that you are, and then you start over. 
All the code for this project is free to download on my GitHub, link down below. Also, the game is free to play on itch.io, so feel free to check it out. If there are any major bugs, I'll fix them, but I'm not going to be adding anything new as I feel like that's kind of against the entire spirit of this. If you like the video, you can sub. I'm probably going to do more of these in the future. Anyway, have a great rest of your day.